Greetings, 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 my sports to the bone people. Back at it with another video. Yes, my viewers and subscribers. So, a couple of things to take a look at in this one. So, yesterday I touched on the Fazir Mohammed interview a little bit where he was talking about the selectors and how they are sending mixed uh, signals. I'm just going to finish up on that. And I also want to talk to you guys about the ODI, um, ODI cricket in the Caribbean and in the world in general. Seems to be a trend where players are now moving away from the ODI format. So we're going, we're going to talk about it. Just give a listening ear. Let me know what you all think in the comment section. If you have not yet subscribed, please go right ahead and subscribe to the channel. Alright, so let me just uh, share my piece where ODI cricket is concerned because it seems to be a trend right now where players are moving away from the ODI format right couple of people saying that they have they, they are retiring from playing ODI most of them are sticking around and playing um, T20 cricket and you still have a few that is sticking around to play test cricket but ODI, which is in the middle, seems as if the players are ready to walk away from it. You know, I was reading some stuff on the ESPN uh, sports website yesterday, and a couple of days ago actually, and you know they were talking about the ICC looking uh, should, that the ICC should be looking into reducing the overs to forty per side instead of fifty, just to try and um, speed things up a little bit. Anyways, um. I'm saying that to say this. Now, the West Indies team we are currently uh, building <laughs> towards 2027, right? We are building towards 2027. Even though from the moment from from I start watching cricket and understanding cricket in the early 2000s, we have been building until now. But we are building on um towards 2027. So my question is this: How many of the players that we have right now? will be there in 2027 anything can happen along the road i understand that but how many other players will voluntarily vo voluntarily decide that listen the odi format is not my thing i am uh, moving towards a t20 format especially if they have a good couple of t20 series remember you know when you're playing the cpl when you're playing different t20 and t10 leagues around the world um, teams are looking, teams are watching, and people might start becoming um, what, you would, what you would like to say, hot commodities, or hot commodity. So, you know, the, you might find it, it's a case where they are hardly available to play ODI um, international games, ODI games. Remember, they are supposed to be a part of that system, a part of that unit that is going to 2027. So, you want to make sure that they are playing most if not all the, the, the available ODI games as a team to be gelling, right? Because as I said, one and two people will fall away at the way at, on the journey. They, you know, their performance will just not be too good, and they have to just for, um, fall aside. <clears throat> but how many of these guys are going to um, along the way are going to decide that uh, T20 is their thing or T10 is their thing? So I'm happy that they are building it up, but I'm hoping they are factoring in these things. And I'm not just saying this out of the blues. Um, take this for example now. So we just missed the World Cup, right? First in our history. Didn't manage to, 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 to qualify for the ODI World Cup, right? And we see our former captain, Nicholas Puran, one of the most um, senior guys we have in the team. Somebody that we depend on. Um, right after the we, we, we missed qualification, the first series, you know, he decided that he's not going to play because he wanted to focus on the T20 side of things. Grant you, we are going to be playing England just the same in those five T20s and he's expected to play a big role, a big part. But we have this big plan, this big goal ahead. And all we can hear or all we heard is that um, Nicholas Puran is spending time to work on his ODI game, on his T20 game. You understand? It's, it's really concerning. You know, over the last uh, two to three years, we have lost 
quite a few players that were mainstay in the ODI team that um, they, they, we still haven't replaced them. You understand? Evan Lewis, we're not sure what's happening with him. Um, well, he played um, in the Super 50 for Trinidad and Tobago, but his form wasn't too good. I think he wasn't fully fit and they had to send him um, out of the squad. So we haven't seen him in the squad for a little while. Right? Shamar Brooks, they had him in there for, for, for a while. Fighting and beating with him and fighting and beating with him. Seems as if he's out of favor now. Ravman Powell was just promoted as vice captain. So they were obviously looking to him as a man going into the future as a part of the leadership group. As a part of, um, well, as a specialist batsman. He's no longer there. Well, he's not there right now. Don't know if he will make it back in. Right? Um... So, Nicholas Puran, as I said, not, not there. Akil Hussein, um, they decided not to go with him. As I said, probably because they, they, they don't want the two left arm spin and it seems as if Moti is the first choice in the ODI format right now, even though Akil has a good record. You know, and it, it's, it's really strange. These are guys that were permanent fix, fixtures in, in just, a couple, just a couple months ago. I can understand wanting to move forward, you know, but I'm just um, thinking, apart from the selectors, not selecting some of them in, 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 in the near future. Believe me, it will happen. What if some of these guys decide that um, T20 is not their, um, ODI is not their, their thing? You understand? So I, I, I like the idea of building towards 2027, but I am just sitting, you know, I was just sitting and pondering how many of these players are going to be available up until then. But many of these players are going to be consistent up until then. You know, um, we, we <laughs> the good thing is we have the academy players um, still playing. We have players from West Indies A still doing their thing. So once 2027 come again, we can have another um, argument to say that we are building. You understand? So uh, I just wanted to I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Jason Hola also seems to be seems to be moving towards the t20 and he's still playing test don't know if he will eventually quit but you know jason hola and um uh nicholas puran those are two guys that you know usually be uh they they they, they were ju just the other they were sure picks you understand sure pick um i mean some people still have a bit of taste in their mode from what happened um a, a, a couple months ago but at the end of the day my people um i i personally believe that if we are building towards 2027 um we should we should have we should definitely have nicholas puran in the team in the squad i don't hear anybody saying much i don't hear them saying anything um he's still making himself available he's still playing the, the t20s i would assume right because he says he's making himself getting himself ready but we don't have them sort of looks ready to 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 um to, to, to have somebody like Nicholas Puran sitting out. But then again, probably we will hear something different in the, in the next week or two. Because we always hear that there is not enough resources in the Caribbean. So any, every, every and anybody is up for selection once their scoring runs. So <laughs> I don't know my people. We just have to be sitting and waiting to see what's going to be the next... Um, what's going to be the next decision from the selectors but i just wanted to talk about that a little bit my people you know um the fact that we're building for and uh, going forward but you know how many of these players are, are are going to stay the course how many of these players are going to decide that they are not going to um give in to the t20 um leagues around the world and uh, mind you once they are not under contract people are not all obligated to stay so you know they <clears throat> They still have to be careful about how they do that contracting when, when they're ready to do it. So just wanted to share that. And talking about the future, um, that, that Fazir Mohammed interview that I was talking about yesterday, he you know, he was talking about the selectors sending mixed signals, saying that, you know, mm, he made the, the direct reference of somebody like Utley, Utley and um, Darren Bravo, saying that, you know, Bravo is just one year older. And would have scored more runs but um we, we know the situation already so that is you know he's saying that that's something that people won't understand and the same thing with shane dorich you know 
Um, he, also, he seems to me as if he wanted Akil Hussein and Hayden Walsh Jr. in the squad. You yeah, understand? So those are some of the things that he's, that he, he's saying. But it doesn't, it doesn't seem, as, seem to me as if he's buying what the selectors are actually selling about um, you know, wanting to wanting to have the squad a certain way because um, some of the selections are, <laughs> are a little bit off. But yeah, the comment section is there, my people. I think we are only going to talk one more time about this whole um, Bravo not being selected thing. And I am going to be bringing you um, what his coach had to say, the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force coach that just won the title with Bravo what he had to say about this whole um, situation and then we should be good to go as we prepare to take on England in the first ODI. I'm gonna leave this one right here for now. Remember to like, share, leave a comment and subscribe if you have not yet subscribed.